is P Productions here with Orlando and uh, Tony. You guys are what? French Foreign Legion World War II, 13th Army Brigade. And what do you have on display here? What we have on display right here is the weapons and some of the equipment that would have been used by the French Foreign Legion 13th Army Brigade during World War II. We have some uh, we have American rifles and British rifles, British equipment and American equipment. Okay, now what is the French Foreign Legion? The French Foreign Legion is a branch of the French Army made up of foreign volunteers. It was uh, created by the King of France in the early 1800s. And the, the whole idea of the French Foreign Legion is a colonial force that protected the colonial, the, the colonies of France. Because French law forbade uh, foreign French, French men from actually fighting in foreign soil. So that's when the French Foreign Legion came about. Okay. Now, explain to me Orlando's uniform. Okay. His uniform, right here, so you get a better... You get a better idea of what we're talking about. In 1940, France was occupied by the Germans. So the French Foreign Legion, which was in the French colonies of Indochina and other parts of the world, could not be supplied anymore because now France was under the German occupation. As a result of that, the logistics for the Legion pretty much fell apart. In the early parts of uh, World War II, early 1940s, the French Foreign Legion was supplied by the British. Later on in the war, it was supplied by the Americans. So Legionnaires became an amalgamation of British and American equipment. This kit, as you can see from the boots, that would be the way a Legionnaire in World War II would have been kitted out with a mix of British and American equipment. His boots are American. See the belt buckles? Those are American boots. Oh wow, okay. His trousers are Canadian, which were part of the British Commonwealth. Yeah. The shirt is French. You can see the patches. France. Free French Army. And uh, this is the patch of the, of the Foreign Legion. Okay. The revolver is American Smith & Wesson. His webbing equipment is also American. And what retains that unique French appearance is the kepi. So this pretty much would be how a legionnaire in World War II, because of what I explained earlier about the lack of logistics yeah. being supplied, it was a mixed French shirt, Canadian Commonwealth, British Commonwealth, Canadian, and by Canadian it's also British Commonwealth, yeah, yeah. pants, American boots, American weapon equipment, American weapons. Now, if you were in the 13th Demi Brigade and you were supplied by the Americans, yeah. his, the uniform would be pretty much what I'm wearing. Okay. This is the American tropical pre-war uniform, which is the khakis. Yeah. American leggings. The boots are British ammo boots. American pistol belt and American Smith and Wesson with a uh, actually this is an American 45 I'm sorry an American 45 an American 45 holster okay and the French KP most people would say well wait a minute but the French have the white KP how come that's not a white KP well, once again most of the French army their KP were of a tan color yeah since the Legion was stationed in North Africa and in the desert, what would happen is that their kepis would start bleaching white. It would start actually fading to, to uh, white because of the sun. Yeah. And the exposure to the sun and the constant wash. 
that's how the French Legionnaires got their fame reputation for having the Kepi Blanc or the White Kepi. Okay. Uh, and, and today, by today's standard, in the French Foreign Legion, which is still very active to this day, they actually are getting the white kippies that are already made white kippies. Ah, okay. Back in World War II, because of logistics and what have not, a lot of them didn't even, they would wear their kepi and they would use a cover to signify the French uh, Foreign Legion was the white kippie. Okay. But a lot of times in World War II, they wouldn't even have a white kippie. Okay. They would just have a standard French army kepi, which is this one here. That represents a NCO. Oh, NCO, okay. Non-commissioned officer. Non-commissioned right. officer. Corporal in this case. Okay. I was a senior corporal. Okay. All right, let's go back to the table. What do you guys have? This is a holster for a uh, Smith & Wesson uh, Revolver 38. That's also another holster. Could be either be a French or American made. It's a standard leather holster. Mm -hmm. This one here is British, British webbing equipment for a revolver, mostly uh, British Webley. But in this case, it could have been, it could have served to carry an American Smith and Wesson revolver, mm -hmm. American grenades. Now, what's this here? The beret. This is a beret of uh, the Cross of Laurent which was a symbol of the Free French Forces. Okay. And if you look at our uniform, you will see also this particular patch signifies the 1st Free French Division. Okay. The 13th Demi Brigade was a part of the, free, of the 1st Free French Division. And it's the same thing on yours? Yes, same. over here in my pocket. We have uh, the French. France. I have we have this, this case, patch. France. This this patch. This simplifies the Union, the uh, Legion. I'm sorry, the French Foreign Legion. Yes. This is the symbol of the Legion, which right. is the uh, the grenade. Right. Okay. Now, Orlando, what's in front of me? Okay, there's three rifles here. Number one, we have the British Enfield Number Four, okay. along with his bayonet. Caliber 303. Okay. Second rifle is the Enfield P17 and 306. Okay. Along with his bayonet. Third rifle is the Springfield 03 and 306. Along with his bayonet. As you can see, there's three different rifles. Oh yeah. They were issued to the French Army, British and American equipment. Mm -hmm. So. You have the three weapons that we use. Well, you could say more British, and Brit then British American, and then American. No, no, British American American. Yeah. This is not. This is not. This is American rifle. The P17 Enfield. It was called. This rifle was used in World War One and in World War Two. By first by the American Army, mm -hmm. and then when the war started, we had a lot of them. So we gave it to the Allies. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I may also add, we don't have it here on display on the table, but I want to make a point. Yes, the French Foreign Legion used British and American weapons. Absolutely. Because of the logistics I explained before. Yeah. Let us not forget, a lot of French units were still using the Mars 36, which was the standard French infantry rifle. We don't have one on display, but the Mars 36 was also used by French, free French forces, mostly the 13th Demi Brigade of the Foreign Legion. Again, logistics played an important part in that, in getting the acquisition of ammunition for that rifle. Yeah. So a uh, French uh, unit could have been armed with the Mars 36. Lack of ammunition would have definitely forced them to either adopt a British or an American, American weapon yep. because of the lack of obtaining ammunition from yeah. the French rifle. Once yeah. again, because of France being occupied by the Nazis. Yeah. Uh, revolvers. This is a 1917 Smith and Wesson, which was used in World War One, World War Two. This revolver is here. They're called the Victory models. They're from World War II, 
and they were given to the American forces or our allies, and they were issued to them as revolvers. 38, 38 special. The victory models. The victory models, yes. This 4 inch and 5 inch power. This one has parkerization. Yes. And this one is bluing. Uh, you well, could say. Well, you know, the wear and tear and it, you know, kind of oh, wears it out. Okay. You know. Well, this is this was originally parkerized then, yeah, correct? Yeah, right. Oh, uh, okay. But like you said, wear and tear and the stuff, you know, in years of use, so you figure how it looks, you know. Beautiful revolvers. Okay. And what's over here? Okay, we have in here two British canteens and British leggings. We have fighting knife. This is an American fighting knife. An American fighting knife. Just a simple American fighting knife. And this is an Italian army knife. Uh, capture. You know, because the legion they fought in Italy and they fought in the desert, mm -hmm. and the Italian army fought in the desert along with the African Corps. So you know, a, 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 a knife that was taken from a Italian soldier. You know, we have a field cap. That's a little netty sweat sweater, you know, okay. British. A hat, GI hat, uh, an American helmet, and a British helmet. American leggings. And I said, here we have British leggings. Here we have American leggings. The unit was, you know, missing matching. Yeah. They were equipped. They were fully equipped, but the units had American equipment and British equipment. Yeah. The equipment was good. There was no problem with the equipment. It's just that some guys had a British equipment and American. some guys had American. Yeah. It's just, you know, they were equipped. Yeah. Over here we have the French flag, of course. And books that deal with the French Legion, 1914 to 45, 1945, today. And this goes over here. Up to today. Uh, Algeria. This is uh, French Indochina. French Indochina. You know, different, different years. Mm -hmm. And this is a POW MIA flag, which yeah. it belongs here. Yeah. It belongs here. Now, That's the French flag. What I'm wearing right now was another unique uh, piece of clothing that distinguished the Legionnaire, which was the scarf, the desert scarf. So uh, you were a Legionnaire outfitted with British, American equipment, or a combination of both. You wanted to maintain somewhat the French appearance of the French Foreign Legion. Yeah. The desert scarf and the kepi. A lot of times it would be the only two items that would distinguish a legionnaire from other Allied troops. Okay. Since they're wearing mostly American uniforms and American yeah. equipment, yeah. they wanted to still maintain their French appearance and sense of uh, the spirit de corps by either the Capi or the French scarf, desert scarf. Okay. The Legionnaire was a proud man and he always wanted to be known as a Legionnaire. You know, so the Capi, you know, that was always, they kept that. That was their, their, uh, their you know, we Legionnaires. You know, Legionnaires say that the Legion is our home. Yeah. Always the Legion. Fantastic. Their motto is Legio, Legio Patria Nostra. Translated means the Legion is our homeland. 150 nationalities represented in the French Foreign Legion. Oh, nice. Legionnaires fight for France, but their allegiance is to the Legion. As their motto says, the Legion is our homeland. Their spirit, the core is very high, and their sense of brotherhood to each other is incredible. They fight and they die as legionnaires. Very proud, and they have uh, they have a right to be. The Foreign Legion is considered one of the best light infantry in the world. They have earned that title through blood and sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. All right, Tony Orlando.
Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Hope we were able to help.